Hi there, this is Chris, Chapman Cap Motor Legends. Today we're going to give you a brief run through the current Bellstaff Pure Motorcycle Wax Cotton Collection. I say current, but in truth not much has changed over the last 10 years, and I'm pretty sure that the company is planning on leaving it that way for the next 10. So actually, if you don't get round to watching this video until say 2029, I wouldn't be too perturbed because I still think it's gonna be pretty much up to date. Now, Bellstaff is not the only maker of wax cotton motorcycle jackets. Companies like Risha, Revit, Sparda, Held and Merlin have all copied Bellstaff's range in one form or another, but rarely do these guys crack it. They might manage to build into their jackets features that Bellstaff jackets don't have. They might even have managed to achieve higher safety ratings than Bellstaff, and nearly always their offerings will be cheaper than Bellstaff's but the bottom line is that their jackets are not Bellstaffs. People on the internet get awfully excited pointing out how their look-alike Bellstaffs do everything that Bellstaffs jackets do, but it costs half the money. And honestly, they may well be right in that. But you can pimp up a BMW and make it faster than a Ferrari, and it will probably be cheaper than a Ferrari, but it won't be a Ferrari. The fact is that Bellstaff knows how to make a jacket look good and they know how to make a jacket wearable on the street. And this is what you'd expect because after all, Bellstaff is a fashion company. Their designers understand style. It's what they do. Put on a wax cotton motorcycle jacket from one of the other brands and it's going to feel like you're wearing a motorcycle jacket. The jacket may look similar to a Bellstaff jacket, might even have a badge on the shoulder that looks almost identical to the Bellstaff badge but it won't wear like a bell staff. You will know it's not a bell staff, and so will everybody else know that it's not a bell staff. Now, one of bell staff's design principles is that their jackets, their wax cotton jackets, their motorcycle jackets, should have what they call boardroom appeal. And what that means is that when the chairman turns up at the AGM in his bike gear, he wants still to make an impression. He doesn't want to look like a courier who's turned up with some last minute documents. We've been selling Bellstaff's pure motorcycle collection since the very beginning back in 2004. Truth is that we've probably sold more of their jackets, of their proper motorcycle jackets than anyone in the world, including Bellstaff themselves. Bellstaff does a very small range of leather and wax cotton motorcycle jackets. They are, I have to tell you, very special. The Trailmaster is the granddaddy of the Bellstaff Pure Motorcycle Collection. It's been in the range from the very beginning and it has to be acknowledged that it's a heck of a jacket. It's constructed with a drop liner membrane, comes with a removable thermal gilet and you get D3O armor in the shoulders and the elbows. It's made from a heavy 10 ounce wax cotton which makes the jacket a pretty weighty piece. And for some people that's the problem. It's a heavy jacket. You get the feeling that when you buy Trailmaster, you are investing in an heirloom piece, but that doesn't make it a particularly easy jacket to live with. Some people are also not massively keen on this center belt. It's a little bit fiddly, and when you open the jacket, it just hangs down there rather limply. What can also be an issue is for those people who are challenged perhaps in the leg department, people like me. You put a jacket on and you put this jacket on and it can make you look as though you've got no legs. Also, if you're shorter in the upper body, when you sit on the bike, you can end up sitting on the tail of the jacket. It works better, therefore, I would suggest on people who are a little bit taller and people who are perhaps a little bit larger. Some years ago, the Trialmaster got a reputation for its appallingly unreliable zips. And the reason was that they had a two-way zip because when you sat on the bike, you needed to splay the jacket and the only way you could do that was to undo the zip. We went to Bellstaff and said, why don't you put a single direction zip in but sit it a little bit higher and they did that that solved the problem there are no longer any issues with zips on the trial master although i have to say we would still in a perfect world still like to see us a couple of zipped gussets on the side again to the same end to enable the jacket to splay a little bit when you're sat on the bike now the trial master it has to be acknowledged is a mother of a jacket it's as tough as old boots and it's going to take a lot of abuse in fact we have customers who long distance commute in this jacket. And whilst it was never intended for such rigors, it will certainly cope. The jacket also works really well with riding jodhpurs, a swagger stick and tall leather boots.
We have a love-hate relationship with the Brooklyn's Mojave jacket. With its Steve McQueen blues on style, it's probably the coolest jacket in our view in the Bell Staff range. McQueen never actually wore one, he never wore a wax cotton jacket like this, but he raced in the desert in a very similar looking jacket that was actually in leather. Now our problem with the jacket is that it actually, I'm afraid, doesn't really work all that well on the bike. And the reason is that it sits too short at the back. And I've lost count of how many times we've had a customer here in the shop who sat on the shop bike in one of these jackets and we found that actually the hem of the jacket sits an inch or two above the jean line and that is just not acceptable on a bike jacket particularly so in one like this one that's meant to be waterproof in an accident you could be pretty sure that the skin at the base of the spine would come into contact with the road whilst in inclement conditions rain is just going to run down the jacket into your pants now we've been badgering bell staff to do something about this for almost 10 years but to no avail Yet the budget brand Merlin recognised this issue and did something about it in their Mojave copy. It's a shame because this jacket is so nice and easy to wear. You could rock up at the coolest restaurant and just not look out of place. Construction wise it's made from a 10 ounce wax cotton. It's got the same membrane as all Bell Staff jackets. It comes with a removable thermal liner, although we've got to admit it's a thermal liner that's not really up to much. Comes as fitted, comes fitted as standard with D3O armour in the shoulders and the elbows. Now, a couple of years ago, when we approached Bell Staff once again about this issue, they said, I'm sorry, we have no design budget left to lengthen the tail. Yet that same year, they committed millions of pounds to the America's Cup. One other thing, if we had our own way, we would lose this belt, which at times can be annoying. We would just replace this waist belt with its buckle arrangement. We'd just replace it with a simple popper. The Crosby is a relatively recent invention in that it did not exist before Bell Staff was sold to the Italians in the early 2000s. It's a demonstration perhaps that just sometimes gap analysis can work. What happened was their in-house designer realised that the longer trial master with a central belt was simply too long on some people, whilst the shorter jacket, the Brooklyn's Mojave, was too short on others. So he created a, a mid-length jacket, in other words this jacket, the Crosby. And in some ways it was a touch of brilliance. Frankly, we think that the Crosby is the most wearable jacket in the entire Bellstaff range. It's made from a lighter weight wax cotton, so it's both easier to walk around in and easier to ride in. And whereas the Trial Master can be unbearably hot in hot weather, the Crosby just isn't. It comes with D3O as standard in the shoulders and in the elbows. You've got a fixed drop liner membrane, but you do not get a thermal liner with the Crosby. But for us, that's not an issue. It's never an issue because anyway, the standard liners that Bell Staff jackets sometimes come, come with are just not really up to much. Personally, would go for a down jacket. And of course, Bell Staff does a lovely one of those with a Bell Staff logo on the left shoulder. The length of the jacket, is going to work on most people. It's more than long enough to keep the rain out. It's always going to be over the belt line of jeans, but rarely is it too long. Rarely do you find yourself sitting on the tail of the jacket. We also like these side adjusters at the waist that are going to enable you to cinch it in to make it look a little bit better. It's a really lovely jacket that in our view rarely looks wrong. The Aerial Pro is the is the simplest, least fussy jacket in the Belsaf range. It's almost devoid of any design detail. And for some, of course, less is more. And for those kind of people, then the Aerial Pro may be exactly where it's at. It's made from a traditional eight ounce wax cotton. That's a pretty lightweight wax cotton. That's the lightest that Belsaf do. The jacket's got a waterproof membrane and comes with D3O as standard in the shoulders and the elbows. You've got one zipped pocket here on the chest and two side jet pockets again with zips. There's a simple popper arrangement at the neck and there's another popper here at the base of the main zip. You get a second layer of wax cotton here on the shoulder and also a second on the elbows. You've got zips at the sleeve ends to enable you to get a glove inside the sleeves and you've got poppers here at the hem around the waist to tighten it a little bit around the waist. If somebody, frankly, had given me a pen and 10 minutes to design a motorcycle jacket, I've got to say this is probably what I would have come up with. It is what it is. You get very few bells and whistles, but it's still a bell staff.
We've already spoken about the Crosby, which is the mid-length bell staff jacket that we think works for almost everybody. Well, this jacket, the McGee, is basically a Crosby that's been Gucci-fied a bit. In stylistic terms, in terms of the cut and so on, it is a Crosby, but it's been given a new lease of life with lots of fancy extra bits, so to speak. It's made from what is known as a technical wax cotton, and that's a wax cotton that's been infused or woven with some stronger synthetic fibers for extra strength. But even though this material makes the McGee feel a little bit heavier and perhaps a little bit more robust than the Crosby, it also ironically makes it feel a little bit softer. And thus, for some people, this is the preferred choice. Most of the construction elements in terms of this jacket and the Crosby are the same. So you've got the same waterproof membrane, you've got D3 over standard in the shoulders and the elbows and so on. McGee has a slightly different side adjust arrangement here to enable you to cinch in the waist and you get some fancier looking quilted panels here on the shoulders and the elbows. The truth is that the Crosby, the plainer version of the McGee, outsells the McGee by quite a margin. But what we often find is that when somebody comes into the shop and tries the McGee on, that they prefer it because it just feels a little bit more, I don't know, it feels a little bit more premium. The only thing you then need to decide is whether it's worth the extra 75 quid. The McGregor Pro is the jacket in which the hand of Luke Skywalker played a part in preparation for his ride up through South America with Charlie Borman in the search for 13 amp sockets. Now, Ewan, being a film star, has a keen eye for looking the part, and so he decided to marry a Sammy Miller era wax cotton jacket with a pair of leather trousers. I have to say that that would not have been my choice for such an adventure, but then again, he's an international farm film star, whilst I'm here knocking out videos on an iPhone on Industrial State in Guildford. The jacket is very boxy in shape. It is also, in my view, horribly heavy. Perhaps that's how jackets were back in the day, but the 12 ounce Halley Stevenson wax cotton of this jacket makes the trial master feel like a six stone weakling by comparison. Weight and stiffness aside, the main distinguishing features, however, of the McGregor Pro are the leather patches that you and designed to go on this jacket, the leather patches that are on the shoulders and the elbows, and the McGregor tartan that decorates the inside of the jacket. Obviously, it comes with a waterproof membrane and a standard, there is D3O armor in the shoulders and the elbows. One thing you should know is that the wax cotton on the McGregor Pro is very waxy. That's going to impair the breathability of the fabric, although it is gonna make the jacket potentially even more waterproof. But don't wear this jacket in the jig because you're just gonna get stains all over the leather. Now, the McGregor Pro does feel rather special and its weight does suggest that you're gonna be protected from the elements pretty much wherever you venture. But that doesn't make the jacket particularly nice or particularly easy to wear. And I believe it's gonna be almost unbearable to ride in when it's hot. I think in conclusion, you do really need to want to wear the McGregor jacket to be able to live with its heft. Some people I know have bought the jacket and put it in a bottom drawer in the belief that over time it's gonna become more valuable, that it's gonna mature like a fine wine perhaps. I've got to say, on that, I cannot comment. But if somebody were to present the McGregor Pro to the experts on Antiques Roadshow in, say, 50 years' time, I reckon that they will marvel at the fact that anybody was able to walk around in a jacket like this, let alone ride a bike in one. The Roberts, this jacket, is made from a lighter weight of wax cotton, making it the obvious choice for summer riding. It's made from what Bell have called technical wax cotton, which is a wax cotton that's been woven with a synthetic, with a synthetic fiber to give it extra strength. Bellstaff don't actually publish a weight for this material, but we'd estimate that it's nearer to the eight ounce wax cotton that you get on the Crosby than to the 10 ounce wax cotton that you get with the Brooklyn's Mojave. As a jacket, it sits short. It's very much a blues on style jacket with a slightly lowered back. Here at the base of the zip, you've got a popper rather than the belt arrangement that you get with the Mojave Brooklands. The jacket has a waterproof membrane, as indeed do all of Belsaf's wax cotton jackets these days. In the shoulders, you get D3O in, sorry, you get D3O in the shoulders and in the elbows. Although this is a jacket where we suggest, or we might suggest that you'd be better off with ghost armor. It's such a lightweight jacket that you're gonna feel this armor a little bit. If you were to put the ghost armor in instead, you wouldn't feel as though you're wearing armor at all. 
There's no thermal in this jacket because, as I've said, it's very much a summer jacket. And indeed, this is a jacket from which all of the unnecessary fripperies and flights of fancy have been removed. It's the most back to basics jacket in the Bell Stuff range, but not necessarily, in our view, any the worse for that. If you want to see more Bell Staff wax cotton jackets, if you want to see more Bell Staff jackets, if you want to see more Bell Staff gear, then visit the website motorlegends.com. If you want to learn more about the jackets that we've been talking about today, then if you click on one of the links down in the descriptions below, that will take you to a section that will concentrate on the jackets that we've been discussing today. When you're on the website, you can check out the specs of the jackets in a little bit more detail. You can check out on availability, and obviously you can buy one of the jackets if you wish to do that. When you buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There is no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free, and what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. Now, we have the best price promise, best price guarantee in the business. John Lewis is rightly famed, or was rightly famed, for their never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find any retail in the UK selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that retailer's prices by a full 10%. Now, there are a few terms and conditions attached to what we call our price beat. Nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beat us, I suggest you visit the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to see bulletins from us about new product launches, if you go to the website, there's a piece of script at the top of the page that says newsletter sign up, click on there, within seconds you'll be in business. If however you'd prefer to get your information videographically, that is to say in this form, we'd be delighted if you wanted to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Finally, I'd like to make a play for our fabulous little shop here at Moto Legends. Situated about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station, and as I've suggested, the shop itself, it's small, it's got a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than three million pounds worth of merchandise arranged over three floors. Technically, that makes this the second largest motorcycle shop in the UK. But we think that we are far more than just the amount of clothing and gear we have here in the business. We are all about service, we're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come to see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even get to sample one of our delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.